what you're eating. Yeah. You're not It's good to be good to you know. You know what? I do something to go around. Yeah. Yeah. Down to page 10. Oh, she highlighted them. Okay. Okay, so sorry we're about a minute late, but so we are on live. Okay. Are you guys in here? And we were ready to go. And I'm going to start the meeting with Mr. Matarazza. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Mr. Lady, I thought you got your meeting. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Actually, you did. But I'll that's take yours. That's mine. <laughs> there you go. All right, at this time, will the secretary please do roll call? Uh, yes, sir. I need to leave my pen back. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right, Mrs. Issing. Here. Mr. Kachas. Here. Dr. Kosho. Here. Mr. Bill Leonard is not here. Mr. Dallas Leonard. Here. Mr. Matarazzo. Here. Mr. Nemec is absent. Mr. Petrucci. Here. Mr. Stovart. Here. You have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. You're welcome. At this time, we turn to Dr. Harris for information. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, first off, I know I sent this out, or Mr. Coyle sent this out last week to parents on March the 5th, um, talking about the dates for grades 10 and grade 9s to return. Wednesday, March 10th, the 10th graders will return, and Wednesday, March 17th, the 9th grade students would return. Looking at the chart, it appears the 10th grade had 212 students who wished to appear, um, who wished to come back five days. And in grade nine, 185 wish to come back for five days. So we are gonna have the students who desire to come back for five days in grades nine and 10, join the students in 11th and 12th grade who are already back five days as well. And we'll be monitoring that for the next couple of weeks to tell you how everything goes. And I'll give you an update at the next month's meeting. But with the end of the year coming up and things happening at the high school, we're lucky to have Mr. Aquilo, the building principal here, to kind of go over some of our end of the year events. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Uh, <clears throat> just want to do a couple of quick announcements. As you know, the last year, year and a half, some pretty tough on our students, uh, especially the seniors. So kind of want to announce and get out there and publicize that we are going to plan on some senior events, try to get things back to normal the best that we can uh, to make sure they have, again, a normal end of their school year uh, going out and graduating uh, with pride. Uh, throughout all these events, we will be following all of our health and safety procedures, masks, and social distancing. Uh, so just please keep that in mind. But some of the top things that we have planned are our scholarship night and top 20 luncheon. Uh, we want to make sure we recognize those top students and students who receive scholarships. So we are going to meet with the scholarship committee and discuss different ways that we can still have a luncheon, still do a scholarship night, and again, make sure those kids are being recognized for all their efforts throughout their last four years. Uh, as you know, last year we had a senior parade uh, before graduation. It was such a hit that we are going to do that again this year. Uh, right now the tentative date is May 26th. 
that's the night before graduation. So we are going to invite the community out to celebrate our seniors, uh, have a parade from uh, St. Barbara's back to Penn Shepherd High School, and again, get the kids out and, and make sure they're being recognized for all of their uh, efforts throughout the years. Um, and then our grand march and prom, obviously for social distancing reasons, we can't have a traditional dance. Uh, so we did meet with senior leaders, and we are going to plan on having a formal <coughs> grand march as well as a senior uh, dinner, a farewell dinner. Um, May 7th is the date, tentative date for those events. And again, kids will have formal wear. Uh, we will have the grand march at the stadium, and then kids will go on to Antonelli's to enjoy dinner uh, with their friends and a guest. Uh, seniors will be allowed to bring a guest. It will be seniors only, plus one. Uh, we'll have uh, the senior slideshow and some other events during that dinner. But again, the kids that we talked to really wanted to have a formal get-together, so we're going to provide that for them that evening. And then finally, we are going to have our graduation. The goal is to have one ceremony as long as things go the way they have been the last few months uh, with the health uh, concerns. Um, get the kids to the stadium, give each family a certain amount of tickets to come celebrate their child. But again, have a traditional ceremony, uh, hopefully with one senior class. And again, just again, want to reiterate that we're going to do our best to plan these events and make sure they are safe events and following all the guidelines with social distancing, mask wearing, and anything else we need to do to make sure we can have the events and keep the kids safe. So thank you, Dr. Harris. Thank you, thank you for your summary. I really like the fact that we're doing the senior parade again. I know last year when we did that um, in May, we got a lot of people who really enjoyed it and gave us a lot of appreciated. I got a lot of emails of thank yous and saying how much they liked it and did it. And, it was a great event. I enjoyed it myself, so I'm glad that you're continuing that. I'm some, it's coming in there as an annual event now. So. These seniors have been through a lot, so we want to make sure we're giving them any, anything we can to, to make sure it's a little normal this year. Perfect. Really I, I appreciate have a question. Uh, sure. Is this, are we doing the same this year as did last year for the seniors? Um, actually, well, last year our graduation was a little bit different. We held it later. I and we, did it, we did it in two groups, if you remember. We had to do it by the alphabet. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, of the different limitations at the time this year, um, he's saying that we're trying to plan for one graduation on the same night, May 27th, is it? May 27th, Thursday, May 27th. May 27th. So. You can do that and last trip? year was the first year we ever did the senior parade before where we had all the kids in the cars and they drove around from the municipal or St. Barbara's over to here. So we're going to continue that now sort of as a tradition. You going to do it under the lights in case you were asking? Are you going to do time? under the lights like you did before, like in case somebody asks us? Oh, everything is going to be similar to last, like for the graduation or for the yeah. senior parade? Graduation. Right. We still have to get the times and everything worked out. Oh, uh, just at the public. That's why yeah. I brought it up. Okay. Last year when we had two graduations, the yes. second one, I, I did say after the event was over how much nice it was because we never really had it. It was later in the evening and the lights were, you know, it got dark and it was nice. We had the lights on and the stars and it was really... It was really special. I really enjoyed it. So I said that last year there might be something to look into down the road. I, again, we, I'd rather get student input <laughs> and then have Tony take it back to his team and the teacher input. Yeah, it it was nice. We'll discuss all the options and mm -hmm. we'll go with what they want. Yep. Any other questions about the event? All right. We have given you an app. Thank you, Mr. Cole. We're also giving an athletic updates from everything because I announced last week that was happening this this past week, and Mr. Inglis has a great write-up for Mr. Hetrick, and it's very impressive. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, good things happening in athletics. Uh, we'll start with the swimmers. Uh, we have a number of qualifiers in uh, the Whippeals, and here's what happened there. Ben Yant qualified in the 50, and the 100 free was uh, fifth in the 50, and 10th uh, uh, in the free. Austin Proc uh, Prokopek qualified in the 200 free, he placed third, and in the 100 fly, he placed fourth. Uh, Pat and Graziano qualified in the 100 back, and he finished sixth. Uh, boys, uh, 200 free relay qualified. Uh, they placed sixth. That included uh, Yant, uh, Prokopek, Graziano, and Connor Alexander. The boys, 400 free uh, qualified. That included Yant, Prokopek, Graziano, and Alexander. They placed third, so that's a nice achievement. Uh, the boys' swim team overall um, finished as a section champs, and they finished fifth in the WPIAL. So 
great job to them. Uh, we did have some state qualifiers. I don't think the states have occurred yet. That's still coming up. Um, Austin uh, Prokopet qualified in the 200 free. The boys 200 free relay qualified. The boys 400 free qualified. Um, so those guys, uh, we wish them luck. Uh, it's another week or two, I think. So good luck to them. The divers, we had the boys qualifiers. Um, uh, Xander Lentz, fourth place, and Caleb uh, Caron, 10th place, WPIL. The girls qualifiers was Marissa Fabek, 17th place in WPIL. So that's all of their swimmers and divers. Uh, as usual, those, Mr. Babick and the swim team always does a great job. So uh, congratulations to all of them. For wrestling, uh, we have Ryan All, who is a 132-pound qualifier, uh, Hayden Coy, 120-pound qualifier, and the section champ. Troy Homan was a 113-pound qualifier and section champ. Luke Pazic, 152-pound quali qualifier. The team placed sec second in the section. The, the team was a WPIL qualifier. Troy Homan was a WPIL runner-up and moves on to Super Regional in Al Altoona on Saturday. Actually, I think that already happened. He did. He finished fourth, so he qualified for the state that's tournament. correct. So he finished fourth, I have here, moves on to states in Hershey. So good luck to him. I think that's this weekend. Uh, girls uh, basketball um, had a good year. They were the number seven seed this year, had an overall record of 10 and seven. In the section, they were nine and five. Um, they did lose in the first round of the playoffs. The boys basketball team, they were number four uh, seed in the WPL, which is, I think, the highest in, the, in a very long time. Um, the overall record was 13 and six, six and four in a section. Uh, made the corner fouls of the playoffs and lost a, a nail biter the other day with a buzzer beater. It was, a, it was, it was hard to watch, but uh, it was their first playoff a win since 2001 when they won their, in the first round. So that uh, basketball team has made some great strides and is, is on track, and we look for good things out of them. Uh, the rifle team was uh, fifth place in the WPL team tournament. Um, the WPIBL, Mr. Lego. They did, uh, did well this year. The boys' qualifiers were Nathan Horton, Trent McCoy, Zachary <coughs> Sudo. Uh, Nathan Horton was a section MVP and first team WPIBL. The girls' qualifiers were, qual qualifiers were Alyssa Ballast. Did I say that right? Yep. Alyssa <coughs> Ballast. Alyssa Ballast, Taylor DiStefano, uh, Katessa Lehman, Taylor Sathornkitch. Sathornkitch, Michaela Uranker, Abigail Vacek and Emily Vacek. And the girls team uh, was third place in the WPIBL regional qualifier. So great job. <coughs> Anything else I miss on that? Uh, no, okay. just that uh, five of the girls qualify for the regionals. Uh, the two Vacheks, uh, Alyssa, uh, uh, Alyssa uh, Ballast, Michaela Uranker, and Taylor Kornkitch have all qualified for the regionals, which is Friday, and the girls teams who finished in the top three is in the regionals this Saturday morning, all seven girls. So very happy with them. Isn't the ballast, wasn't there a ballast that, that was a state champ a years ago? I think when I was a principal. I believe when there Amanda ballast, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah, I think she's up in the gym uh, on the wall, if I recall. Yeah, I, she was. It was a, six or seven years ago. My first ago. year when I was a principal at Level Grand, she was in fourth grade. Yeah. Right. We've, we've had I some very successful that. girls bowlers. And yeah, I'm was still expecting, ago. you know, we got a good chance this this weekend and on to the states is our expectation. So. Yep. I, I have a question. Other than, other than coaching, Mr. Lego, where's the, uh, where's the, what, what lanes are they going to be at? Where at? They're going to be at uh, North Versailles lanes. The, huh. Both the regionals and the state finals are at North Versailles this year. So. I just set pins there. And we live stream it on Twitter. So tune in 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock uh, Friday morning for the singles and 9 o'clock uh, Saturday morning for the teams. We'll be there. All right. That's exciting. Yep, the last team was, How's uh, that go? That next weekend the States? Next weekend the States, yes. The last team was the, the ice hockey team. They uh, finished overall 7-7, seven and seven, so didn't have a losing record. We'll take 7-7. Seven and seven. Absolutely. <laughs> didn't our rifle team do well? I'm sorry. Guys. Yes, I meant they, they placed uh, fifth at uh, Whitfields. Okay. All right, thanks for the update for sports. I kind of... It was a busy week last mm -hmm. week, and as we get more, we will continue um, sharing the information. Tonight, we will have two retirements for teachers um, from our, or well, one's there's one of our teachers, school nurse, and one of our elementary teachers um, for approval. I kind of wanted to say something now because I know sometimes when we stop you when you're reading, it's kind of hard. 
but Amy Markovinsky has been a school nurse for our district for 28 years. Um, outstanding, and she, during the time, she also helped coach different um, sports and different activities. But I have to tell you this, last year as a school nurse, boy, did she really come in, she really had to step up and really take um, a lot of different roles and responsibilities for our health and safety plan. She had a lot of contacts and phone calls to make. Um, really appreciate the school nurses and all they do and all the help they help with the kids. So she would definitely be missed. And even last year, she was the first, was the first to help volunteer with all the lunch um, giveaways when we started, um, when the state let us um, have um, lunch giveaways to students. And she did that all summer um, with me. And I really appreciate her help in organizing that. And Claire Donnelly, she's retiring after 25 years of service. Um, she actually had an interesting career because she started at the Harrison Park in grade one and then she moves up to the high school and she actually taught the family consumer science classes as well as the preschool for a year or two. And then she went back to McCullough for grade two. And that's where she's ending um, her career. So very nice lady. Um, kids are, we're very lucky to have her, um, very positive. So we're losing um, two great teachers off our um, or off our chart at the end of this season, so at the end of this school year. So I'm very sorry for the loss, but I'm excited for their uh, retirement and hope they can um, enjoy it. They really earned it. Um, today we found out that, um, and we, last week we announced um, that the teachers, and you probably read about this, were eligible to get vaccines. Now they were, um, they were on the list. So we did a statewide incentive where they, not incentive, a statewide program where they did it through the IUs. And our numbers changed throughout the week that we were first given, but it ended up being that the 339 that signed up um, for the vaccine are all gonna get it. And they're gonna get it during the days of, um, starting this Saturday to the 17th. So I guess that's the 13th through the 17th. The times for Saturday and Sunday are from eight to eight and the school day times, they're doing it all in the evenings from two to nine. So that helps with the teacher schedule. So um, that's coming through. We have actually more, um, but some of our teachers already might have received it prior um, to this time, especially if they fit into the 1A category. So we have some more than that. But as of now, the 339 who qualify for it are getting it. They're doing one more rollout to teachers for like around two, and that's gonna be at the end of March. So more teachers who might want the opportunity or who missed you know, signing up, it'll be one more time um, sending out a survey. And that's coming from the state. <laughs> they handle it. They just kind of give me the numbers when we're all done with what we're doing. Uh, Dr. Harris. Yes. They're all going to be getting the Johnson & Johnson. The 339 are the Johnson & Johnson. That's what they're doing for the teachers. So it's only a one, one shot. It's a one shot. So they just have to make one appointment. And then at this time, I just want to take a minute to recognize um, the passing of Sarah Klein. And I want to emphasize that probably since I've been here as a superintendent, she has attended every school board meeting. And I can always see her in the audience, front row, front center, that was her seat. And one day when I was coming in here in between the meetings, because uh, I forgot a book on my table, she was here <coughs> about an hour earlier. And I said, well, you know what, Sarah? You're, you're early, you know, it's early because I know I came to get my seat. And she always sat in the front row. And no matter what we ever did in PT, she always had a smile. She sponsored many clubs. She sponsored many things throughout the community. She was an avid supporter of the Scholarship Foundation every year since the first year. She sponsored three kids. She sponsored our Penn Traffic Community Ed Foundation. So I was very fortunate. So. Uh, a lot of the team sports, she would sponsor kids, so she would definitely be missed. And um, I think her the last meeting she attended was in October, and then she kind of stayed away. So it was um, sad to hear of her passing um, at this time. But like I said, for ever since I was a superintendent, she was here, and she was prior. I've been attending school board meetings for 13 years, and she's always been here, and she's always been a fan. And some nights when we were going to a game, and I said, and we were driving in the snow to get there. <laughs> she might have been the only fan if it was a away game, but her and um, at that time Sally Bradley was with her. They would be in the. They would be there. <laughs> you know, driving at the game to watch the kids at away game. So, very good. It was very nice to um, talk about away. Have an opportunity. She didn't live in the district. 
No. <laughs> she didn't. She, she taught um, briefly for us for Latin, and then when she left, um, she still wanted to sponsor PT, so she didn't live in the district uh, at the time. She had another residence, but um, she also had a partial residence. <coughs> it was partial, but she always um, supported us, and I really do appreciate it. So at this time, I would love to just to take a moment of silence for Sarah Coy. Thank you. And she would definitely be missed. So I'm going to turn over my part of my information, and I, I took a little bit longer than normal, so I do appreciate it. So I ask you, Mr. Matarazzo, for the meeting. Dr. Harris, can I just make one clarification on, sure. a, on, a, on an item here? On, on page 7 under F, uh, Budget and Finance, Proven Transfer of Funds, there's a motion to transfer $161,000 from the General Fund to the Capital Project Funds. And under the notes for executive content, it says that uh, $159,000 is for core architects. That is not correct. $159,000 is the total project cost, which is going to the contractor. And it's just a mistake in the, the executive content notes there. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that $159,000 is not good to core ar architects. That's for the entire project cost. As the project is ongoing, it's just easier to make one transfer as opposed to doing it on a monthly basis. So, any questions on that? Everybody understand what I'm trying to babble so about So the 2000 here. is what? The 2000 is the payment to Core Architects for their invoice. Okay, so that clarifies. And the rest... Yeah, the 159 is the total project cost, which is going to the contractor. So we just made that one big transfer so that we don't have to come back every month and do, you know, individual transfers as the progress of the project goes on. But uh, it's incorrectly identified under the executive content as that being a, a, a payment to core. It's not a payment to core. That's the payment to the contractor. It will be the, con the total amount of the payments to the contractor when the project's done. Okay. Any, any questions for Mr. Lego? Okay, thank you. I just wanted to comment the creativity and innovation of our administrative st staff. Uh, Mr. Aquilio and Dr. Harris, when we st uh, you started with a suggestion for a parade last year, and you guys took the ball and ran and made something very special from a suggestion to what happened. And it's just a, indicative of what you guys are doing for the seniors this year. All the things you're doing is easy to say, well, we can't do it. And you made a way for our kids to be able to, you know, have a, the dance and all the sort of thing. Not the dance, I'm sorry, but... Uh, but all that you're doing. So thank you so much on, on behalf of the board for being creative and doing what you can for our kids. And, and thank you for recognizing me, but I have to tell you what most of the credit goes, all the credit goes to Mr. Quillo and his um, fellow admin at the, the building for like the party mm -hmm. last year and everything. So thank you for recognizing oh. him, but I want to make sure that they, thank you. Terry, thanks for making me look good <laughs> and for doing that for the kids. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, they deserve it. They, they, it was from you guys, so. Okay. Um, this time is a recognition of visitors. Uh, we have no one signed up. I think we have a visitor, but I think we have to sign up before the meeting starts. But thank you for being here. And uh, this time we move on to uh, old business. Not this evening, Mr. President. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, at our executive session, we meet uh, before the board meetings. At this time, we met at 545 tonight. And the board met and received information on planning for the end of the year. Mr. Coleo shared the activities and compliance with COVID uh, restrictions. So that was our meeting. All right. At this time, consent agenda motion. Does the board wish to remove any items from the consent agenda? Everybody's in good shape. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted under one motion? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Chasik. It's second. been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as submitted under one motion. Are there any questions? <coughs> questions. Thank you. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No? Motion carried. Great. So now we're going to be able to, to move forward. 
And at this time, athletic and extracurricular, Dr. Casho. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have a few items. Actually, I have one item tonight that I'd like to bring forward. Uh, motion to approve the following spring athletic positions. Salaries determined in accordance with the negotiated agreements. New employment is contingent upon the receipt of all necessary documentation and acceptance of the Act 34, 151. Act 114 waiver from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania within 30 days. I'm not going to go through all the coaches, but I will mention the sports. We have baseball, uh, coaches uh, associated with baseball, softball, tennis, track for both boys and girls, middle school track for both boys and girls, volleyball for the girls, and volleyball for the boys. Okay. Is there a, is there a motion? Second. Question being called for? Second. Question. Question. All those in favor of the motion of approving the uh, list that Dr. Kasho pointed out, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kasho. I mean, there's like 20 people there. <laughs> I mean, this is a quite a long list that uh, people don't realize. Some talent on there. Please. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's all. All right. We move down to buildings and grounds and safety. Mr. Dallas Leonard. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have one action item for tonight. I would like to make a motion to approve the Penn Trafford School District's revised 2020-2021 health and safety plan copy of that plan will be filed in the office minutes of this meeting. Okay, motion's been called for. Do we have a second? Second. Great. And question? And just question. to remind you, this on the changes, this has to deal with bringing the ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, and so we're, called, we're just having incorporate that into the plan like today. I think that's where it's a minor change. And we also had to take the travel restrictions that were changed. So just, just some minor changes as, as things develop and I think every couple months or every month we'll be making some minor modifications to the plan as, as needed. That is right with the travel restrictions because um, we did have that in the plan, but now that they are listed, we have to take them on. I almost forgot to mention okay. it. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. It's been seconded. Question? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Now I move to personnel and curriculum. Mr. Petrucci. Thank you, Mr. President. We will accept the following retirement resignations. Claire Donnelly, teacher at McCullough Elementary School, effective June 30th, 2021. And Amy Markolinski, school nurse district wide, effective June 30th, 2021. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. 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 Thank you. Question. Question. All those, uh, this will be a roll call vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, next to approve early graduation. Move to approve Taylor Lloyd for early release and graduation with the class of 2022. She will graduate after the first semester of 21-22 school year. Taylor has been recommended by the high school principal and superintendent. Verification will be on file January 17, 2022, that Taylor has fulfilled all state and district requirements for graduation in accordance with the state law and district policies. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. We have a second? Second. Seconded. Any question? I have a question. Yes. Uh, what are her plans? I was going to ask Mr. Corrales. I'm not sure. I know she's going to school earlier, but I don't know much. She's um, going to attend Youngstown State. Youngstown State. And she okay. was um, offered a position there in their soccer team, so they start early, so she's going to start with them okay. early semester. Yeah, that, that, that happens. Okay. Thank you. I think that's great opportunities um, for Taylor, and I'm glad she has us. So it's great. We have a one, maybe one student per year sometimes take advantage of this. Very good. Okay, it's been moved, seconded. Any other questions? Okay, we'll call vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? Motion carried. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. This time, our solicitor report. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions for our solicitor? <coughs> I'd like the, the community to know that everything we do, we try to make sure from the solicitor standpoint that we're doing things according, accordingly to state rules, laws, et cetera. And uh, that's why we have to, you know, we're so thankful to have a solicitor with us. You're welcome. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. That was quick.
Yeah. We have a second. <laughs> Any question? You need to think twice about it. All those in favor? Uh, uh, opposed? You better not. Thank you.